In this video, I'm gonna be airbrushing a dino dog. I know you're thinking, what is a dino dog? Well, it's a NFT project where one of the founders, Adam Dewhurst, is an Oscar-winning VFX artist. He is responsible for some amazing characters, including Guardians of the Galaxy. He's also worked on Batman, The Dark Knight, and Tenet. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I recreate one of Adam's designs, which is this particular Dino Dog that I hold. And the team at Dino Dog have been kind enough to allow me to do this video to show you how I go about airbrushing it and creating a painting from this amazing 3D digital art. And I just wanna make things clear that even though I do love this project and I'm invested in it, I'm not suggesting that you should. If you are interested in this particular project or any other projects, that are NFTs, then please, please, please do your research. I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not telling you to buy anything in particular. This can be a very risky space to be in. So always do your own due diligence when investing in any of these projects. This is just a tutorial video to show you how I go about airbrushing one of these cool designs. Let's get into it right now. So I've prepped up an aluminum composite panel and I've airbrushed it with some black just using Trident Black as my base. And I wanna base up my panel with this Chroma Air Aluminium. The reason I've gone black is I always do that with all of my metallics. I just start off with a black base and that helps to give them a bit more depth. And just spraying it on, doing lighter coats with a 50-50 overlap, so I get a nice even coverage. And also change your direction. So from moving side to side to up and down, you can see it's covering really nicely on that black. So I've just switched the extraction fan on, just helping to get rid of that overspray is quite a bit. So I have my reference image here, printed out onto photo paper. Just need to tape this down so it doesn't move. And with some transparency film, also A4 size, just lay that over the top. And using a bit of gray Hexa spray mask vinyl, I'm gonna stick this over the top in order to create my drawing, which will transfer my design and also become my template. The reason I'm using this method is because this particular 3D art is extremely sharp in certain areas. I wanna be certain that I get that same look and I can't stick this vinyl down straight onto the reference because it will do this. You can see it's just removed a big chunk so it would absolutely ruin the reference image. By doing this, I can now trace around using the fine point of my Sharpie and then I can airbrush my design using this template. Now you can see I'm just pretty much focusing on all the key areas. A lot of it I can do freehand using my reference image. I've saved a high res version of this onto my iPad. Using an iPad is always a great idea when doing any sort of artwork because you can really zoom into that reference image, especially if it's high quality. Now I can peel the spray mask off. I've missed a section there with the tooth. Anything that you miss, just come back in and fix it up. There's my basic template. Now using just a hobby knife, I wanna cut out the lines that I've just marked in. The reason I'm doing this now is it makes it easier to obviously cut anything you need, but also you don't risk cutting into the base. And once you do that with the painted surface, you could potentially lift up a section and ruin it. So by doing it like this, I'm just safeguarding myself. And if you can't keep a nice straight edge for these spikes on the collar, then you need to use a ruler Okay, so now that I've cut everything, I'm gonna get another piece and lay that over the top. This is so I can lift this up and transfer it to the panel. Just drop this down. So essentially I'm using this like my application tape. I like using this though because I can see through it and peeling back. 
making sure that none of those pieces are left on the backing. Now get him in position. So I sort of want him over this side of the panel, like that, perfect. And using an applicator, just making sure that it all sits nicely. And then I remove the top and keep the backing sheet as well. So not this, but the just the plain backing so that you can place your pieces back on there and reuse them. And with regular paper, I'm just going to mask up around the edge. So I protect my overspray. So I'm going to spray the beanie first. So just grab an edge of this mask. If it hasn't cut through, carefully cut back. Make sure it's flowing well. And then I'm just going to add that yellow as a base color to the beanie section. Now I'm using some Trident Sepia with black. So it's just mixed with a couple of drops of black. I just want to reposition this template here just so that I get my edge of the beanie in there. I'll start with the top, just a light dusting. Don't need much at all. I'm kind of aiming for that edge. Lift that template up a bit as there's another bit of shading under here. Dust back over with a bit of that yellow, just to tone some of that down. Now I'm using some Createx Illustration Colors Yellow, and I'm just going to dust back over it. Now it's got some yellow mixed with white. I just want to come in and do a bit of the texturing. This will give the beanie more of a fabric appearance. Now another little dusting of the trans yellow. So now that I've done the beanie, I'm going to work on the teeth. Now for the teeth, I'm going to start off with a flesh. And just base coat them all with that first flesh tone. And then I'll add some shading and highlights to render. Now I'm going to use some sand colour to add a bit more shading. Now some burnt umber. Put a little bit of texture in as well using this colour. Now some regular sepia brown and using this I'm just going to refine some of the details as well as add a bit more shading.
add some more of the transparent yellow, put some of that on the teeth to make them appear more decayed. Using the original flesh tone, I'm just gonna drop a few drops of white in there just to brighten that tone and use that for my highlights. I'm gonna detail the teeth with this as well. Not just highlight as in spray the tone over the top. I wanna to work with that base color. Again, just dropping in some more white. Do one final highlight. Okay, now I wanna work on the eye. Now, because I'm getting close to the beanie, I'm just gonna put these back on there to protect from overspray. It's fine, that section there is far enough away. Now I'm gonna start off with a transparent black. And with that tone, I'm just gonna dust straight over the top of the eye. Obviously be careful of the teeth. Now using white, going to do a light dusting. See why in a minute. And then the specular highlight, up close for that. Give it a bit of a glow. And there's a little bit brighter highlight in that section. It's going to look a bit messy, but don't stress, I can fix that. Now coming in with the transparent black again. This is where I knock back some of that white. Now switching back to the white, re-brighten that specular highlight. And the eye is done. Okay, now I have to go ahead and mask up the beanie, the eyes and the teeth, and then remove the area for the skin and start airbrushing that. This time you have to be a bit more accurate. And wherever there's a bit of a gap, just come in with some masking tape just to stop that overspray from getting through. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove the head, recut any areas that haven't cut right through. You don't want to stretch the vinyl. Now I'm gonna airbrush in the skin tone. You can see this is a pre-mixed color that I've already got. Nice light green, sort of closer to a teal looking color. And just gonna put some of that in and base coat the skin area. Bit of a tip, I also put some fluoro green in this. And what that does is it just helps to make it pop. I'm going to use some cerulean blue just to add a bit of a tone to the skin tone in certain areas. Now adding in some moss green. So I've made up a mix of transparent base, moss green with a couple of drops of Viridian. And I've got some paper templates here. It's gonna establish some of the key areas within the design. Just line it up and aim for the edge of the template. Same thing down the bottom here. Let's pick up that edge. Go ahead and add some transparent black in as well. Again, just aiming for the edge of that template. While I've got it, I'm gonna do a bit of a drop shadow under the beanie. Remove that one. 
starting to give it a bit more shape which is great and now the nostril and that scar line these up again and spray them in with the trans black and that's enough key points that I can work with now back to my moss green viridian mix and I'm going to start rendering Going to go ahead and get a glove on for this because I'm going to rest on the surface. Now it's just a matter of adding in all the texture freehand first. It's going to be a long process but you could use texture templates or erase it. However I think to get this sort of dinosaur skin pattern you're better off just doing it freehand so I'll utilize this tone first and then I'll come back in later with a darker tone most likely the trans black in certain areas And for those of you that are into NFTs, I will have links to the Dino Dogs website in the description below. And you'll also find more info about our NFT project, which is called Six Skulls. And you actually get a physical painting of mine sent to you upon purchase of the NFT. So you'll notice I'm moving around as I'm adding in the texture. There's a reason for this. Number one, it keeps it a bit more interesting. However, it's also a way to avoid replicating the same shapes. You want this to appear more organic. And what you tend to do is just replicate the same sort of pattern that you're airbrushing. So by moving around, it kind of forces you to reset your thinking and you tend to do some different shapes and create a more realistic texture. I am using the reference as a guide but I'm not copying it 100% as far as the skin texture is concerned. You'll notice I'm running it extremely thin as well, and it's also got the transparent base in there, so it's not as strong and heavily pigmented. But because it's fairly thin, I've dropped the pressure on the MAC valve, so I've left the PSI the same on my compressor. That's set at about 30 PSI. And if it does spider out a little bit, it's not a big deal. It just adds to the effect. So to add a bit of texture in these areas, I'm actually gonna deliberately spider them out. work back over the top and spider out some of the other texture areas. Again, just allowing that air to push the paint out perfectly. And just the shape of that jawline there isn't lining up. So I'm just gonna hit that with a bit more transparent black. I'm going to add some white in the cup with some of the base color green. And with this tone, I'm going to add some highlights to all of the skin areas. They're doing a bit of uneven stippling just to get a bit of a different texture with these bits of the skin tone. 
And if you are enjoying this video so far, then feel free to give it the thumbs up, share it out, and let's build this airbrushing community together. You can see how the texture is built up in layers. So you've got your base color, then your underpainting, and then highlights, and then I'll go back in with some more shading. So it takes time. I'll probably also bring in a bit of a freehand template. Use whatever methods you need to to make it look more realistic. Now I'm going to do some detailing. I'm going to use this moss green mixed with black. So if you're enjoying this video and you want to learn more, then you can definitely check out our online airbrushing course at airbrushasylum.thinkific.com. I'm just going to use this splatter template to add some texture on this skin. There's a couple of marks on the skin that looks a bit like splatter. So I'll just use this to simulate it. A little bit of a pattern. It's coming back in with that highlight color. I'm just gonna hit some of those really bright areas as they've just gotten some overspray on top now from the dark green mix that I used. So I just want to pull a couple of these out while I can. Not going to go over everything. I'm just going to add some extra tone to the skin. I'm using lime. Now I'm going to add some more toning to the skin using cerulean blue. And some darker shading, again, just patterns on the skin. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the collar now. First thing I'm gonna do is mask up the area that I just completed, all that skin. So I've trimmed off the overhang. And now I'm gonna unmask the blue section of the collar. Do that bulk blue first. The reason being is it's gonna be easier to stick back on once I've completed it. So there's a little gap in the collar there which needs to be black, so I'll just use a bit of the transparent black. Also, you can see a tiny little gap. So I'm going to mask up this part here. So I'm using a pre-mixed light blue. This is just Trident White with True Blue.
So I'm going to use this micro dot template to create some texture and I'm using transparent black. So I traced back over the design and got a couple of templates made up here for these shadows. Just very light. And another one for this edge. So I'm going to do some highlights now to my white. I'm going to add a little bit of that original blue from the collar, mix that up. So I'll use that as my highlight tone so it's not as stark. Also put a bit more texture in as well with this tone. Just stippling with this highlight tone to get that pitting in the leather collar. Now I need to mask it up again and do the spikes. Now I'm going to leave them the aluminium colour. Just going to put highlights and shadows on them. We'll do one at a time.
Okay, so now that the Dino Dog artwork's complete, I wanna do the background. Now, before I do the background, what I like to do is I wanna seal this with some SG100 Intercoat Clear. I like using a urethane intercoat because it just helps to protect it. I know that it's not gonna lift off. And that way, all of my hard work and detail within the artwork is safe. You don't necessarily have to do this step. As you can see, I've had no lift off issues whatsoever. I just like doing it as a precautionary measure because I don't wanna do the background, have everything complete, and then peel this off, and I risk removing part of that highly detailed artwork that you've spent hours creating. So I've got some pre-mixed House of Color here, put that into my Eclipse. You don't need a great deal, and because it's urethane, I like to put my extraction fan on. Usually I would wear a mask as well, but I wanna explain what I'm doing here. Okay, so what I want to do now is mask up what I've done, and this is going to protect the artwork. Got a mask back over this because I uh, took off a little bit of the tape. This is just a fine line tape. So we're going to put some Trident Black in the airbrush to create some spatters on the background using a mixing stick. Angle the airbrush down and that's going to create spatters and ricochet the paint onto the surface. You can see it creates a nice grain. The further back you are, the larger the spatters. And then up close you'll get finer ones. We're just doing some sort of patchiness with that black. And I'll just darken up behind the dino dog as well. Now same procedure with the white. Just use a bit of transparent black now to dust over that drop shadow. This isn't as harsh. Now I want to add in the Dino Dog logo. I've made up a template. Make sure that all of your spattering is dry. And I also have the number of the Dino Dog. Now these are all just hand cut. You could get them cut on a plotter if you wanted them more accurate. But when it's something like this that the lettering doesn't have to be perfect, I usually just hand cut it. Now I want to mask up around the outside edge to protect from overspray traveling. Now I don't want a heavy black, so I'm just going to use the transparent black. Give that a couple of coats. Same deal for the lettering. Pick off the inside sections. I'll run some cracks through this one. highlight down here because the light source will pick up on this edge. Now I just want to continue the cracks. Now I'm using that Trident Black this time. It's a bit more opaque. dust over the top of those cracks.
Okay, now I can remove the mask now that the background's done. See, I've got a bit of bleed coming through. I'll clean that up with a cotton bud. Okay, now I'm just gonna go through and do some final touch-ups. So a bit of white and the original skin color. I'm going to go back and re-highlight a little bit of the skin. Just going to keep adding this lighter mix. So you can see by using that micro dot template, I've got some of that real fine sharp stippling in there now, and I'm working over the top of some of that to break it up, but it just adds again to the texture. So to continue your learning, be sure to check out some of the other videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.